Hello to all fans of physics and physical experiments. I'm Andrei Shetnikov, and today's video will be dedicated to an interesting experiment called Columbus's Egg. To do this experiment, you need to take an egg, preferably hard-boiled so that the internal viscous forces don't slow it down and spin it forcefully. And as a result, we see the egg stand up on its end. This experiment seems quite unexpected. Due to the rotation, the stable and unstable positions of the egg sort of switch places, and the spinning egg doesn't lower but, on the contrary, raises its center of gravity as high as possible. In principle, sometimes, though rarely, the egg stands up on its pointed end instead of the blunt one. But honestly, you have to wait quite a while for that to happen. However, if you spin it on its pointed end, it stands just as well as it does on the blunt end. So this stable position of the spinning egg is also possible. The experiment with Columbus's egg belongs to the same group of experiments as the one with the Chinese top, which stands up on its little leg. We have a separate video about it, and I highly recommend you watch it. The link will be below or the experiment with the Celtic boat, which spins from just a light press of a finger like this. We'll talk about it someday too. And all these phenomena are only possible because the spinning object interacts with the table on which it spins, due to friction, and loses its energy. If this interaction didn't exist, the egg wouldn't be able to stand upright either. And there's a simple proof of this fact. I'm going to demonstrate it to you now. So, let's consider a spinning egg at the start and in its stable upright position. Let's denote the moments of inertia of the egg. I1 around the transverse axis and I2 around the longitudinal axis. And let's say that at the start, the egg was spinning with an angular velocity omega 1. And when it stood up on end, the angular velocity became omega 2. Now, suppose the egg didn't rub against the table, then its angular momentum L should be conserved. At the start, it was equal to I1 times omega 1. And when the egg stood upright, it became equal to I2 times omega 2. And since I1 is greater than I2, that means omega 2 is greater than omega 1, the egg started spinning faster, just like a figure skater pulling in their arms. If the egg isn't slowed down by friction, then its energy is also conserved. The initial rotational energy was equal to one half of our one times omega one squared. And it is partially converted into rotational energy, one half of I two times omega two squared, and partially into potential energy, mgh, because the egg's center of mass has risen by a height h. Now, let's take into account the conservation of angular momentum L and rewrite this equation as one half of L omega one equals one half of L omega two plus mgh. And since omega 2 is greater than omega 1, it turns out that the egg's energy has increased, which violates the law of conservation of energy. The only way out of this contradiction is to say that friction acted on the egg during this process. It reduced its angular momentum and decreased its energy. And it is precisely due to the action of this force that the egg stood upright. And if there were no energy losses due to friction, then such a rise of the egg would be fundamentally impossible. And high-speed camera footage shows that as the egg rises, its rotation frequency practically does not change. At the start, it was making 16 revolutions per second. When it stood upright, its rotation frequency didn't change at all, and then it slowly began to decrease. And you have to wait a bit longer for it to drop to 14 revolutions per second, when such rotation will no longer be stable. And now, the main geometric difference between these two positions. When the egg spins on its side, the center of its curvature in the drawn cross-section is noticeably higher than its center of gravity. But when it stands upright, everything changes. And now the center of curvature is below the center of gravity. 
So, I've shared all my preparations for the explanation, and at this point, I want to pause to separate what is truly understood from what is only partially clear or not clear at all. And there are several reasons for that. First of all, we've already presented our explanations in the video about the Chinese top. And you can always check it out if you're truly interested. Secondly, all explanations of this kind come down to the question of the nature of the friction force. Is it rolling friction? And should we assume that the top is always touching the table with its bottom point in such a way that this bottom point remains stationary and the instantaneous axis of rotation passes through it? Or is the top always slipping? And should we talk about sliding friction, which in situations like this can behave quite unusually, not at all like it's described in a standard school textbook? And then there's a third point. Any explanation of this kind should also address why, in order for the egg to stand up on its end, its rotation speed needs to be sufficiently high. Why is there a threshold frequency? And when the egg spins more slowly, it doesn't stand up on its end. By the way, my eggs stand up differently. This one stands up more easily. And all of this creates a complex shell around this topic. Also, I'll drop a link below to an article from the journal Nature. You can thoroughly check it out there, where you will find all the necessary details and information. And now, I extend my sincerest gratitude and appreciation for your valuable time and unwavering attention throughout this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.